Teams versus groups. What is a group? A group is really just a bunch of people coming together for some reason to share information, some sort of interactions. So we can say that groups are a collection of individuals, a collection of people coming together, interacting with each other, and generally our actions have some sort of impact on the other people. We do know that in organizations today, you cannot really be just an individual. Most of our work is done with other people and through other people, whether this is in a group setting or whether you're in a team, which we're talking about in other audio recordings. Uh, We do know that a majority, over 90% of top managers or high-level managers say that we need teams and groups and organizations to function. So it's the state of the business. We will have to work with other people. Uh, It's important for our individual success, and it's important for the success of the organization that people come together and collaborate and have uh, successful teamwork. So... There are two types of groups, as you see on the right side of my screen here. So you have informal groups and you have formal groups. Both exist in organizations, even though the formal group is the one that is uh, put together by the organization. So it's formally appointed. It might be sitting somewhere on the organizational chart it's designated in the structure of the organization. So these formal work groups are made up of managers, subordinates, maybe both. They have some purpose of coming together. We also have our informal work groups. These are not denoted in the organizational chart. They are not appointed in the organizational structure. These are gonna be your buddies that you talk to in the hallway, the people that you go to lunch with. Um, So we do have interactions that sits outside of the formal organization. And of course, we talk about work. We talk about our coworkers. So a lot of organizational and company information are transmitted in these informal work groups that are not designated or appointed by the organization. So a lot of work happens outside of the structure of the, uh, the teams that is designated by the organization. Okay, Bruce Tuckman came up with a very linear model of how groups unfold over time. So this is really about when we get together from the first start of coming together for some group work, uh, going through the life cycle of a group, and then we end. If we have a temporary team, obviously we will adjourn at the end. We will end the team or the group. Um, It could be a team, but we're talking about groups right now. Or if it's a permanent work group, obviously we would only have four stages, forming, storming, norm, performing. We would not adjourn because it's a permanent team. So it's a linear model. It's descriptive, meaning it tells us what happens at each one of the stages. Uh, it doesn't say uh, what is a better stage. It just says this happens at storming, this happens at norming, so on and so forth. So for temporary teams, five stages, we start with forming. So forming is really the stage where the group comes together for the first time. We don't really know who we are, what we're doing. We might not know why we're here. So we have very little agreement. We have an unclear purpose. So in this forming stage, we probably have some level of anxiety. We're probably presenting ourselves in the best manner because we don't know who the other people are. We don't know if we're going to be accepted, what our role is going to be, who's going to be in charge. So we're a little bit uncertain. So we're just forming at this point. In the storming stage, this is going to be the phase where we start to explore, tinker, try out who has power, who has influence, uh, who has stake in what territory, who can do what. So in the storming stage, we will see some conflict. People are dropping their best behaviors. We're showing up a little bit more uh, in terms of who we are. We're trying to figure out more about our purpose. And we see those power struggles as we're jockeying for positions within the group. Our third stage is the norming group. This is the stage where we find it more easy 
uh, to establish our ground rules and we call them norms, right? So informal rules, not necessarily written down, they are norms. So this is the norming stage. We defined our operating procedures, we define our goals, we know a little bit more about who we are and what we're supposed to be doing here. So at this point, if we have a leader, they're probably stepping back a little bit more, letting the team members take over because now we're starting to get established. The fourth stage is where we finally are performing. So here in this phase, performing, we're not only getting the work done, but we're also paying greater attention to how we're actually doing it. We have more of a clear vision, we have a purpose, we have a focus on goal achievement. So now we are actually wanting to make sure that we have high quality, that we are meeting our goals. Uh, and our group leaders at this point are more coaches than leaders. They help our team members grow, they grow in skill, they grow in leadership, and we are fully functioning and we are performing. And then at the end, if it's a temporary group, we complete our tasks, we close out, we should be celebrating, we should be acknowledging what we have been doing up to this point as we are adjourning from the team, from the group. Obviously, not team or not group that comes together will perfectly follow Bruce Tuckman's linear uh, model of group um, development. So we also have something called the punctuated equilibrium model, which proposes a little bit of a different life cycle for groups coming together. So we have time again along our x-axis and we have change on our y-axis here. So what we're seeing here is we have the team following this curve, if you follow my pen here on the screen, and we see we have some flat, some flat periods of stability, one right here, you have one here in the middle, we're just flat, we're stable, we're not changing very much at all. So for majority of the life cycle of the team, we are in periods of stability. So the punctuated equilibrium theory then tells us that what happens is we will have change in rapid radical spurts. And that's the dotted line that shoot up right here. And it shoot up, shoots up right here. So we are actually changing quickly, rapidly, and we're doing in brief periods of time. So what this model is telling us, instead of gradually increasing over time, we have quick punctuated equilibriums, which means we change quickly. And in between those quick changes, we have moments of stability. So that is our punctuated equilibrium model. The last little bit we're gonna talk about for this audio slash video is cohesion and cohesive groups. So cohesion is really about how much we like each other, how much we like being with each other and working together. So we can define it as the degree of camaraderie within a group and we act together as one unit. And we also know that when we are a cohesive group, we tend to share a bond, a purpose, we work together on something common. We're trying to make sure that we have some structured pattern of communication and we have that collective identity. So these things tells us we have a cohesive group. We also have some factors that will impact whether or not the group will be cohesive. So the question is, are we gonna like each other and have camaraderie or not? So these factors that you see here on the left side say, if we have these things in the group, we're more likely to be cohesive, meaning we have a higher degree of camaraderie, we have a higher degree of liking being together within the group. So similarity is the first one. So the more similar we are to each other in terms of whatever, education, skills, maybe age, maybe our gender, our attitudes, whatever, values, beliefs, the more similar we are to each other, the more cohesive we tend to be. We also have stability, which is the second one. So stability means tenure, the extent to which or the degree to which we are 
together for a long amount of time. So the longer a group stays together, the more cohesive it will become. So just spending time together means we're going to be cohesive. The third one is size. Size matters and smaller is better. Large groups tend to break into subgroups. So smaller groups tend to have higher levels of cohesion because we can get to know each other a little bit better. The fourth one is, whoops, the fourth one is whether or not we are encouraged to actually support each other. So the fourth one is support. Whether we receive coaching, whether we are encouraged to support each other, the more we do that, the more group identity we will have uh, and we will have higher levels of cohesion. And lastly, we have satisfaction with team members. So cohesion is also correlated to how much we like being each other. So if I think you're a great performer, you have great behavior and actions, you have a pleasant attitude, uh, we all conform to group norms, we're all satisfied. The more satisfied we are with each other, the more we will be cohesive. But clearly, cohesion is just not great. The more we have that strong group identity, we identify as one group, we like hanging out with each other, we're also less likely to question each other. So when somebody says something that doesn't sit quite right with you, you don't want to rock the boat. So you don't say anything. And that is when we get groupthink. Groupthink is this group pressure phenomenon that increases the risk of us making bad, bad decisions. Because now I like you and I don't want to hurt your feelings and I don't want to hurt the identity of the group. So I'm not going to say anything. So that means that people get away with not making the best decisions. And we call this groupthink. It increases the risk of us making bad decisions. We are allowing reductions in what's called mental efficiency, reality testing, and moral judgment. We don't test our decisions against reality. We don't make our best judgment. And we're not really being mentally sharp. We're not being uh, the best we can when group think kicks in. So we have to pay attention to are we actually letting people get away with things they should not be getting away with just because we like each other. And lastly is the effectiveness of groups. So we have here on our uh, left side of the screen, I'm going to pick a different color for this one, blue works great. We have our extent to which we have cohesion. So here we don't have a lot of cohesion. We have low levels of camaraderie. Here we have high group cohesion. So when we are in a situation where we have low task commitment, meaning low performance norms, nobody really feels that they need to work very much, and we have high cohesion, guess what happens? Yep, we're just going to hang out, we're going to chat, we're going to drink coffee, nothing happens. And obviously, low group cohesion, we don't even like each other, and we don't feel like we have to work, we just show up and we sit on our phones, and we don't pay attention. However, if you have high task commitment, we know we need to get the job done, and we like each other. That's going to be the best place to be. We like each other. We know we have to get work done. You're going to have the highest level of commitment. So high group cohesion and high task commitment, best place to be. All right, that's going to wrap it for this audio video.